Recently, Ten On Your Side covered the story of a veteran who lost his sailboat in the storm. A GoFundMe fundraiser raised 9000 for the veteran before it was discovered that he is facing 10 counts of possession of child pornography. Do you know this story? No. The GoFundMe organizers pulled the fundraiser and the site refunded the donations. What are some simple steps you can take to make sure you're donating safely online? Talking with the bigger thing. So when I say that, is he okay with a microphone like that? Yeah. What is your advice, Mike, on um, what you see online donating and what people need to remember? The internet has created an unprecedented vehicle by which people are robbed. Very, it's, that's the easiest way to say it. Um, all sorts of online scams involving charities. Uh, even if, in like this case, the GoFundMe might, for, might be for a legitimate concern, there are ways to vet these, um, and you should vet them. Charity Watch. Um, there's a list on the Federal Trade Commission website for ways in which you can vet it. You should never, ever expose your credit information, make a donation, unless you completely know and understand all the basics. And the, the same thing that is used to scam you, the Internet is also a valuable resource to vet. Find out, check, Google. And it may be that you find out that there's a problem with this. We see this all the time. Right now, you know, the Consumer Protection Unit of the Norfolk Sheriff's Office, we're investigating similar scams that involve Norfolk citizens. It, you've got to be able to know where your money's going. Governments, you know, they're never going to ask you for, 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 for money like this. They're not going to call you. They're not going to ask you to buy money pack cards, you know. Mm -hmm. And these GoFundMes are popping up left and right. You have to be mindful uh, of, of who you're giving to. And there's ways to do it. You simply have to vet it properly using the Internet, using Charity Watch. One lead after another will get you to the point where, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to send it out. You mean like GuideStar? The GuideStar site? Yeah, the GuideStar. Um, the, the Federal Trade Commission lists uh, BBY's Giving Alliance, um, the Charity Navigator, Charity Watch, Candid. There's a lot of places that are legitimate that will help you vet these. I especially tell the elderly, never expose your information. Never give information on, online. Official, vetted, valid agencies and people will never ask you for private information in those media. It, so that should set up warning signs. And, and unfortunately, for a lot, it, don't, it does not. The elderly have been preyed upon disproportionately as well. Way in um, on uh, GoFundMe, I, way in on that, the story that I just told you. He was a veteran, and some lady set up a GoFundMe, uh, the kindness of her heart, trying to help, you know, people helping people type thing. And it turned into this unfortunate turn of events, which she had no, which she had no way of knowing. You know, I'm always cautious with GoFundMe. You, you don't know where it's going. The people that set up these don't realize that there's tax implications. You, you, you're actually receiving what could be classified as income, and people set these up left and right, and they don't realize that they're that they're possessing money given to them that could be classified as income. They have to be very cautious about this. How could, how, what would we, what do we expect the person that set this up to have done so that, I mean, how was she supposed to know about the, uh, you know, the, the charges that are against the, 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 That's why, that's why, the, the, that's why you have to be so cautious, Andy. Uh, you, she could not have known, I'm sure. But the problem is, is once you get in, in, involved in these things, it's, it's a hotbed for problems. You're talking about federal and state laws that control these things. You're talking about wire transfers, the potentiality for wire fraud. Uh, a, a lot of very high-profile people have gotten in trouble over these. You know, Steve Bannon and, and others involved in this uh, border wall fundraising led to federal charges. You've got to be very careful. And you don't know the person that you're raising for. So if you don't know, don't do it. And, you know, these GoFundMes are far too prevalent and people need to be very cautious about that. Get information from the IRS, get information from an attorney. Are you responsible for those monies as income to you? That might keep a lot of people away from this that think it's just, oh, let me set one up and then I don't have to worry about it. There are records of this. 
I think she did know him, but she didn't know this about right. him. Listen, the poor soul has a wonderful heart, but we still need to be mindful of these things. And even though she couldn't have known, I always say, if it, just, just be careful with these. And, you know, they should be used very sparingly. Uh, you know, specifically disabled veterans or somebody with a really set need that you know. Otherwise, I just think that the burdens of these outweigh the benefits. I think that we live in a, in a country where we want to help the veterans. I mean, it's, it, you know. Absolutely. Um, from the time where people were talking, I was spit on when I came back from Vietnam. Oh. That's not where we are right now with veterans. Agreed? Exactly. Now, the fact that he was a veteran probably got more people to want to contribute. Absolutely. But, and, and again, that. presumptively, that's great. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, many veterans organizations have been co-opted. And, and there, there are some that simply get invented. That's why you need to vet them. Um, there have been a lot of federal investigations involving people that actually would prey on veterans groups or pose as veterans to receive donations. That's why these charity watches and the whole process of vetting is so important for people because, listen, this is hard-earned money. And the folks that, that generally want to donate the most are, are, el are the elderly. And, and, and we want to help them ask the questions that will protect them. Uh, if you knew the amount of scams that the Federal Trade Commission, um, federal task forces have focused on, you would be amazed at the, the, the absolute lack of conscience on people that would co-op the most precious charities and, and, and causes in order to steal. Many times, these people are beyond the reach of United States law enforcement. These are uh, places in Belarus, places in China that are beyond the reach of law enforcement. This money is gone. And so the whole idea of to the extent that you can, you've got that initial urge to give because we all love our veterans, but you've got to be a, you've got to step back for just a little bit and do a little bit of research. And that's what we urge the people that we deal with and that ask us for advice on, uh, listen, I got this phone call or I got this solicitation and we'll assist them with that and I've done that. But far too often, right now, is absolute record in terms of people that are being preyed upon with all level of scams. Grandparents being called holding, and, and being told that your, your grandchild has a DUI. You need to pay the fine. People that are told they didn't show up in court and, and, and they're going to get fined and they're running out buying money pack cards. These should send signals to people. GoFundMe is the same. You know, if you really don't know the person, if you really don't know the object of it, especially if you're the person who opened it up and may have liability over it, I'd be really cautious about that. I think, let me um, see what you have here. Yeah. You okay. Uh, yeah. Did, did you have any questions, Drew? I think I'm going. I can't believe. Be careful how you pay. You, you had talked about that. Let me, let me just run through these real quick. Yeah, sure. I'm going to run through the big. <coughs> yeah, sure. I don't know how much time you have for the yep. piece, but this is important. Um, I'm going to go through the category. Just give me a bullet point about it. Sure. Be careful how you pay. Uh, anytime anybody solicits you for money pack cards or ask you for credit card information over the phone, decline, hang up. Keep scammers' tricks in mind. Absolutely. <laughs> if anybody knows information about you and calls up, um, ignore it. Hang up. Nothing stops you from hanging up. And the government will never, ever contact you this way. Uh and I told you that I was contacted saying I owed money on my uh, Dominion Energy. Absolutely. That's one of the biggest ones. They know about it. They knew that I had a bill that may not that needed to be paid. Anything involving a money pack card, anything involving a prepaid card of any kind, anything that asks you for credit card or personal information, just say no. Um, avoid charity scam. Do some research online. Absolutely, the, the uh, uh, Better, Better Business Bureau Charity Watch, um, all, all sorts of charity watches are available online. You can check, make calls. Do not give one dollar until you're certain of the validity of the cause that you're contributing to. An iceberg of unseen crime, what's that? Essentially, right now, w what we're finding out is much of it is underreported. People are embarrassed people aren't sure they've been scammed. Uh, it, for every one that's investigated, there's probably 10. 
That's the iceberg. That's the iceberg, is that people uh, don't report it. It's one of the most underreported crimes that there are. And it's a very serious economic crime that, unfortunately, I is not getting the attention that it should. Our unit does pay a lot of attention to these. We work with the FBI. We work with the Norfolk Police Economic Crimes Unit. We try and do everything to help, but these are so hard to pin down. They're very sophisticated in how they hide themselves, spoof numbers, hide their identities, and people, unfortunately, wave their money goodbye. Um. I if you don't stop it at the get-go, at, at job one, in the first instance, you may never recover your money. What is the number one thing you can do to tackle consumer fraud head on? Is uh, uh, keep your antenna up. Mm -hmm. People are not, you, no valid entity or person is going to ask you in a text message, mm -hmm. in a phone call, or in an email for your personal information, particularly a government entity. Um, if somebody calls you and says they're a sheriff, uh, or a police officer and they want you to pay a fine. That's not how this is done. And, and the more we educate, we find actually that education is the best defense against this type of rampant cybercrime. Are you suggesting that those who are less educated get ripped off more? No, I'm suggesting that uh, even professionals mm -hmm. have gotten scammed this way. People with a high sense of civic responsibility People who, when they get a call from a sheriff or a clerk of court, they're immediately wanting to make it right. It goes across all um, uh, strata of, of society. And we've seen it everywhere. Unfortunately, the elderly most often, but we have seen professionals left and right uh, become the victims of these scams because they have a high a sense of social consciousness. Of course, they want to make sure the government is okay with them. Of course, they don't want to be behind in fines, and they don't know that they're being scammed. Any other things you want to add? I really want to add that people need to be vigilant. Listen, there's no harm in taking a pause. <coughs> if you think it's a government agency, then find out. If, if you're asked to give money to a GoFundMe and you're not really sure about it, then don't. Caution and vigilance are the best protection for our wallets and our hard-earned money.